South Korea's remarkable economic transformation over the past 60 years is truly astounding. From being a struggling nation with a poor agricultural economy in the 60s, it has now emerged as one of the world's largest economies. So how exactly did South Korea achieve this tremendous growth in just a few decades? Before we proceed, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, could I please request that you do so? We're a team that's working really hard to bring you these videos and we need to reach 1000 subscribers so YouTube will allow us to monetize our channel. Your support means everything to us, even if it's free. Now without further ado, let's dive in. After gaining independence from Japanese colonial rule in 1945, the Republic of Korea, which is what it was called prior to the split between North and South, faced immense challenges. The country was in a state of disarray, burdened with poverty and widespread devastation, ranking at the bottom of the global economic ladder. Although there had been some industrialization during Japanese rule, it was primarily exploitative, benefiting Japan at the expense of the Korean people. The situation worsened due to the Korean War of 1950-53, which left South Korea's infrastructure in ruins and its population traumatized. By 1956, the country's exports were meager, consisting mostly of small quantities of tungsten, rice, seaweed, iron and graphite, and amounted to a mere $25 million. In stark contrast, imports reached $389 million. Moreover, South Korea heavily relied on U.S. aid, which contributed to approximately 80% of government revenues and played a significant role in the country's GNP. Despite these seemingly insurmountable challenges, South Korean leadership was determined to rebuild and transform the nation's economy. The country's metamorphosis was catalyzed by key reforms under the administration of Yee Sung Man, specifically in the realms of property and education. Yee Sung Man broke the monopoly held by the landed elite through land reform that involved redistributing land to small farmers. By doing this, he aimed to stimulate agricultural productivity and create a more equitable distribution of resources. This reform helped to empower the rural population and provided them with opportunities for economic growth. Yee Sung Man also prioritized educational development as a means of transforming South Korea's economy. He recognized the importance of building a skilled and educated workforce to drive industrialization and made investments in expanding educational infrastructure, improving access to education, and promoting quality education at all levels. This laid the foundation for the development of a highly skilled labor force that would later become the backbone of the nation's industrialization. Yi Sung Man's groundwork was further built upon by military leaders Park Chung Hee and Chun Doo Hwan. Park Chung Hee, who came to power in the 1960s, believed that industrialization was key to propelling South Korea's economic takeoff. Under his leadership, the country shifted its strategy from import substitution industrialization to an export-oriented approach. This shift involved promoting the growth of industries that could compete in global markets. To support export-oriented industrialization, Park Chung-hee's government implemented various measures, including providing subsidies, tax incentives, and preferential credit to export-oriented industries like textiles, steel, and shipbuilding. The aim was to encourage the expansion and competitiveness of these industries in international markets. Park Chung-hee also cooperated closely with large family-owned conglomerates known as Shebols, which included prominent companies like Hyundai, Samsung, and LG. The government provided them with financial support and protection from foreign competition, fostering their growth and enabling them to become global competitors in their respective industries. Chun Doo Hwan, on the other hand, came to power in the late 1970s and continued the commitment to industrialization and export-led growth. During his tenure, South Korea further strengthened its industrial base and focused on technology development and innovation by investing heavily in research and development, particularly in industries like electronics, telecommunications, and automobiles. It was through these efforts that South Korea became a global leader in sectors like semiconductors and consumer electronics. The emphasis on tech development and innovation helped the country overcome its limitations in spatial economic and mineral resources, enabling it to compete on a global scale. As a result of all of these policies, by the 1980s, South Korea had developed a strong presence in the global market and its exports had become a significant driver of economic growth. Today, South Korea is the world's 10th largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity and the 30th wealthiest country overall. Its per capita income has skyrocketed from just $67 in the early 1950s to $33,790 in 2019, rivaling that of many Western European countries. The country now boasts a highly skilled and educated workforce and a thriving industrialized urban landscape. Industry accounted for 32.4% of GDP and employed 25% of the workforce in 2022. 
Heavy investment in R&D has fostered a culture of innovation, propelling South Korea to the forefront of cutting-edge industries like artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and green energy. South Korea is now a world leader in semiconductor production and has a strong presence in textiles, steel, car manufacturing, shipbuilding, and electronics, while South Korean companies like Samsung, Hyundai, and LG have become household names. The country's exports as a percentage of GDP skyrocketed from 25.9% in 1995 to 56.3% in 2012, while the service sector has also experienced tremendous growth and now accounts for about 57% of the country's GDP, while employing 70.2% of its active population. South Korea's agricultural sector has remained relatively small, contributing only 1.8% to GDP and employing 4.8% of the active population as of 2021. But even that has undergone significant modernization. Technological advancements have improved efficiency and productivity, allowing South Korea to maintain a stable domestic food supply, despite limited cultivated land. The country produces a wide array of crops including rice, barley, wheat, corn, soybeans and sorghum, and engages in large-scale livestock farming. As a testament to its extraordinary development, South Korea became the first former aid recipient to join the Development Assistance Committee of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in 2009 and has also become a prominent player in international trade and diplomacy. Having overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles, South Korea has emerged as a global powerhouse and an inspiration for countries worldwide.